here's something you might not know about jack-o'-lanterns. Carving pumpkins is such a fun tradition, but the tradition of jack-o'-lanterns actually came from Ireland, and Ireland didn't have pumpkins. They're native to North America, so what were the Irish carving? Turnips! Yeah, the Irish were carving faces into turnips for a long time. And when they came over to America and brought this tradition, they ended up switching over to pumpkins because they found that pumpkins were a lot bigger and easier to carve. Some of the traditional turnip jack-o'-lanterns were pretty horrifying. Which, I guess is fitting. They were originally supposed to scare off evil spirits. That thing looks like an evil spirit all on its own. Trick or treat! Trick. What? You heard me. Try something. Uh, uh, I just want a treat. Oh, well, that's not what you said, is it? Uh, um... Come on, let's see it. <sighs> yeah, that's what I thought. What just happened? Hey, everybody! We appreciate you guys coming out. Thanks for joining us. I mean... I, I know your time here is very limited, so yeah, I'm really glad you chose to spend it here. <laughs> okay, look, I, like, I, I get why you guys do that, I mean, but uh, to be honest, it's a, it's a little demoralizing when you, when you do it here, so maybe we could just tone it down a little. <laughs> That's not too much trouble. <laughs> I hate this job. Hey, what do you call Nogglefar when it gets close to you? Noggle near. Fun fact! Similar to Halloween, Dia de los Muertos, or the Day of the Dead, is a time of year when the spirits of the deceased can return to the human world. And it also has a bit to do with butterflies. You see, monarch butterflies are a species that migrate south to Mexico for the colder months, and they get there right as the Day of the Dead is beginning which has resulted in the popular belief that these creatures are actually the spirits of the dead coming to visit their families. Which, I think makes sense. I mean, right when the Day of the Dead begins, all of these things fly in? Why wouldn't you think that? So maybe don't swat at any of these things. Wouldn't want to accidentally smack Grandpa. What's really interesting about this is the ancient Greeks also used butterflies as a symbol for Thanatos, the god of death. What is it with butterflies and death, man? That is not the animal I would think of. Oh, he's gonna love this. Hey, Adam, come see what I made. Oh, oh, God, help me! Oh, myself, what's going on with you? I just woke up and I was bleeding profusely. Oh, God, do you know what happened? No, I mean, uh, we, we hung out in the garden, you took a nap, I tucked you in, and I tore one of your ribs out. Say what now? Why would you take my rib? Well, remember how you said you were lonely earlier? Well, I made another person for you, and I, you know, I had to tear out one of your ribs to do that. But you made me out of dust! Like, why didn't you just do that again? Well, Adam, you're a man, okay? This one's a woman, and women come from people's ribs, I've decided. Are you kidding me right now? Do you have any idea how much this hurts? All right, I'm sorry. Here's the woman. You know, I've got like 20 more of these things. Let's pop a few more out. Hey, dude, I got a little gift for you. Whoa, is this a chocolate Mayan calendar? Dude, this is awesome. Yeah, I know you're into that stuff, so thought you might like that. Hope it's tasty. Yeah, but honestly, the design is so perfect. I don't know if I can bring myself to ruin it. Oh, well, uh, I mean, you don't have to eat it. What? Hey. You know why Poseidon is wearing headphones? Cause he's listening to some Neptunes. So here's a mythical creature who seems a bit fishy. The Iwanabozu from Japanese mythology. Oh weird, another creature from Japan. See, apparently the Japanese believed that if certain fish lived long enough, they would grow to human size, grow human limbs, start walking around on land, and start dressing up like monks. Sure. What do these creatures do, you ask? Well, they seek out greedy humans who are overfishing or using poisons in their fishing and proceed to lecture them. Yeah, basically these creatures just go around telling people, hey, hey, you, you don't need to fish that many and don't put poison in the water. Stop that. Knock that off. Not very environmentally friendly. Kinda implies these creatures don't mind their own people getting mass slaughtered as long as it's regulated. How professional. Also, in the stories I've read about these things, the people they encounter usually don't notice that they're not human. 
because I guess people are idiots. Tell us what happened the night you were attacked. I was asleep. I thought I was dreaming. Then the woman just chopped all of it off. <laughs> God knows if it will grow back. <laughs> My career is ruined. Look what she did to me. I'm born. I am the first major being to come into existence. Oh man, what I do next will be the most important and significant event to occur in Egyptian mythology. Hey, you know why Tlaloc wanted to be king? Because he likes to reign over people. Here's something you might not know about Excalibur. If you're familiar with the legend of King Arthur, you may have noticed something strange. He seems to acquire Excalibur twice, once by pulling it from the stone, and once from the Lady of the Lake. Well, there's actually a reason for this. See, originally, these were two different swords. Yeah, the sword in the stone was not Excalibur, though in later versions they were merged together. The sword in the stone was Arthur's first sword up until it got broken, and then that's when Arthur went and got Excalibur from the Lady of the Lake. Though there are also tellings where the first sword actually gets stolen and later used by Mordred to kill King Arthur. Eh, there's a sad full circle. His rule began because of this sword, and it ended because of this sword. You probably want to know the official name for this sword, and hey, so do I, but when I looked into it, it looks like everyone's still arguing about which one's legitimate, so couldn't really get a definitive answer on that. Oh well, sword in the stone, I guess. And now, pick up lines. I'm here. What are your other two wishes? I'm not Arabian, but I can still go a thousand and one nights. If I told you I was Sinbad, would you be my eighth voyage? Mmm, those are some nice legs. Open sesame. Your carpet doesn't have to be magic for me to get on it. It's not a lamp, but if you rub it, we can still make some magic happen. Great work, everyone. The community loves God of War Ragnarok Valhalla. We did it! Oh, uh, my phone's vibrating. Sorry, give me a second. Hello? Uh, yeah. Hi. Oh, not this again. Look, buddy, I've had enough of your crap, okay? So far, all of your games have released finished, you have yet to implement any microtransactions at all, and now I hear you've added in an expansion for free? I can only assume that was an accident. No, we did it on purpose because we're already highly successful and we wanted to put out a love letter to our fan base. Are you insane? How do you plan on making money? Putting out quality products and maintaining community trust? Okay, now you're just making up words. Dude, you ever stop to think the way you do business is wrong? Right or wrong doesn't matter. What matters is money. But thanks to what you keep pulling, you're showing the community that there is no excuse whatsoever for the anti-consumer stuff we keep doing. You're making us look bad. I think you make yourselves look bad. Now you listen here! No. <gasps> What are we supposed to do now? Make good games? You're fired. Hey, what did Adam say on the night before Christmas? It's Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas. So here's a mythical creature who's probably just a homeless guy, to be honest. The Belsnickel from German folklore. The Belsnickel is an equivalent of Santa Claus, only instead of a nice red suit, he wears tattered clothes, furs, and sometimes a mask. His pockets are filled with desserts and mixed nuts for the good children. The bad children, however, he beats with a stick, similar to Krampus. Surprising number of Christmas characters who beat children. He also sometimes has the good children sing songs for him in exchange for the desserts. Okay. And also, if the kids take the desserts too quickly, he'll sometimes beat them with a stick too. Dude's really just looking for any reason. You know, call me crazy, but if I were a kid and a stranger came up to me wearing tattered clothes and a mask and told me to start singing in exchange for treats, I'd probably GTFO. Um, who are you? Oh, crap. <sighs> All right. I'm Santa. But you're not wearing a red suit. Yeah, I used to wear that, but then I realized my whole job revolves around me not being seen, so 
What's the point in dressing up? So now I just wear whatever. But your hair and beard aren't white. Kid, I'm immortal, so my hair doesn't turn white. I don't know why people think that. Well, you are fat. Hey, I'm working on it. So do I still get Christmas presents? Yep, but only if you go back to your room. Okay. Mm-hmm. Works every time. <laughs> I'm working on it. Now, son, did you remember to feed the little lamb? Uh, actually, Dad, could I not spend time with the little lamb anymore? Is something wrong? He's just, he's freaking me out lately. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Why? What's going on? Do you hear what I hear? Hey, what do you call Odin when he leaves his house? Ode out.